メロコーンヘビーヘビー I think there's a third one that deserves there's a third one that deserves to be in there, John. Hi, I tell her! I tell her! He did it! He fucking did it! I tell her! We are live on YouTube on this Saturday night. In hindsight, John, I'm glad the game isn't Sunday. To everybody listening to this podcast, it's good to have you. This is Saturday night after Niners Packers. Woo! Wow. Wow, 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 wow. <clears throat> That's, you know, let's, I, I did not believe they were going to win until they blocked the punt. I had, I had, my faith level was at probably 20%. I, he- I just heard some fireworks going off in the background. People are fired up. Uh, but I, I, I tweeted this out, and I, you know, I know you and I philosophically view football very similarly. That is peak NFL. The weather, the venue, Lambeau, the cold, the bodies dropping. I mean, every play. Star players, Kittle, Trent, their guys, limping off the it, That game felt like a war zone. That game felt closer to 80s and 90s football, right? Because that's just the way it plays when it's freezing cold. And the Niners, for whatever fucking reason, under Harbaugh and now under Kyle, are just built to compete in that environment, which is insane because it's, it's actually kind of chilly today, but it was like 60 degrees, <laughs> you know? It's just... They they go into these environments that are war zones and freezing cold, and they just throw haymakers and they get hit too. But they they can take it. They can just take it directly on the chin. Mike Tyson, the famous line: "Everyone has a game plan until you get punched in the mouth." The Niners consistently over the years with their great Harbaugh teams and now these unreal uh, Kyle playoff teams. Because this team wasn't unreal during the regular season, but what they're doing now is fucking unreal. They are built to get in the ring and throw haymakers and and take them. It's yeah, incredible they have a type, to watch. Right, this team has a type which is playoff level football type. Games that are roller coasters over the course of the year, right? They played a lot of them. This was their ninth one score game this year. I think they were four uh this actually might have been their tenth one score game this year. I think maybe now they're five and five in one score games, something like that. They play sometimes in games this particular team against teams uh that shouldn't be close against. But they they know how to play in these games. Um, I think about the physicality of the 19 regular season. The 19 regular season was incredibly physical. Obviously, the 19 postseason was physical. But they play postseason style football a lot. And you're right. There's something to it from Harbaugh to Shanahan. It's not by design. They went to Tom Sewell and Chip Kelly in between. It's not like this is you know the way the franchise plays. <laughs> they, ain't okay? the Steel- they ain't the Steelers. You know? No. <laughs> But you're right. It, there's something to There's absolutely. And I think the reason that you and I have always loved that type of football game is because it values points and it values every play. Every play matters more when points are at a premium, not 38-36. 38-36 is great, too. And if that's what that was, we wouldn't complain. But if that game had been 38-36, it, the, it would just feel, I think, very different than what that was which was it felt like anyone who came into the game at 100%, which probably was nobody, did not leave at 100%. And it felt like most gags came in at 80 and left at 60. Debo Samuel, who we'll talk about, but he is kind of representative, his ability to be 50% in between plays and then 100% when Jimmy Garoppolo hands him the football is incredible. It's just incredible. The, 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 when he – his injury number one when he hurt his shoulder, I felt the entire – 49er fan base saying, Debo, take my shoulder, take my shoulder, take my labrum, take my clavicle, have it all. <laughs> but then he just, he shakes it off and he comes right back in. You know, he just, they, all of them, they, they, it is, those guys are fucking absolute war daddies. It's everything general managers and coaches look for in players. And listen, I, you, you we're Fresno State guys. I, I'd go to war with Devontae Adams. He, he falls under that bill as well. You want guys that are in the trenches in these games that not everything's in a dome and, get, like you said, going to be 35 to 32. Do you have guys that you can just be in the war zone with? Because even early on, you're like, Mitchell's feeling his way around. But as the game went on, he starts fucking running hard. And it's just like, okay, you can just go to war with this guy. I mean, they have those guys. That's what, to me, was so impressive. 
I, I, I saw you had a tweet like, this ain't the gutless Cowboys you're playing. Like Aaron Jones, they just have guys that just kept making plays. Their defensive guys kept making plays. It's like, okay, this is just, you're just in the ring. They're throwing blows. You're throwing blows. It's It was going to come down to who had, like, at the end of the game, like, does Jimmy throw a pick? The fucking punt happen? It was just, that that to me is peak NFL. If I was a 10-year-old, we were lucky enough, if you grew up on this team, to have games like this as kids. And the Niners, for whatever reason, in, in my youth, and obviously in other kids' use these last decade, have just played in some of the most epic games in NFL history. Like, it, it's insane. Because you got to also factor in the storylines, right? You just beat the guy that won the back-to-back MVPs. They cruised to the one seed. They had a bye the final week of the season, right? It's like they, they were not, I mean, they were in complete control. And I, and we all value, like, that team is good. Yes. It's not like, to me, good. they weren't I like the soft little... McCarthy teams. No, no, They no. were physical. No, it very much want to play the kind of game that the 49ers want to play. Like, it felt like a match, right? This was not, Rodgers made a couple of plays. But, you know, I think it was their run game consistently in some big moments you felt like had to make a play, did or didn't. Their pass rush created a lot of problems for the 49ers. They stopped the 49ers on fourth down and one. Like, they played the same game the Niners played, except from ahead. Except from ahead. I I don't – it's not like I've studied Rashawn Gary, but I didn't realize, like, he was still a major guy. <laughs> he was he, – he looked – I mean, at times, he looked like fucking Reggie White against, uh, you know, Tom, Tom Compton. Compton over there. That was a rough matchup. Yep. <laughs> not for two guys that had uh, 500 bones on the money line, though. A little money line. MyBookie.ag, promo code HAM in the number one. That's right. That's right. The lock of the week this week, we put 500 on the Niners money line. What did we did we get it at plus two? It actually wasn't even our lock of the week. We just did it like, fuck it. It was an incredible value. Well, we did that, and we, we also picked the Rams um, to, you know, on Sunday. On Sunday, we'll see how that, as we record this, uh, obviously that game hasn't happened yet. MyBookie.ag, promo code HAM in the number one, where they will match that first deposit dollar for dollar up to 1000 bucks if you accept the bonus. Remember, you have to bet the full amount before you can withdraw funds. You can also decline the bonus. Either way, HAM1, let them know we sent you. That's HAM the number one. What, what, was, our, uh, what was our number? We had them, I think, plus it, it's the bet already cashed, so I, I think it was plus 210. Yeah. So we won uh, $1,100. Actually, $1,600 because you get the 500 back. I like, and I like, uh, mm. then tomorrow, let's, let's just, come on, Rams. Let's go, Rams. Even though, you know, in a weird way, I wouldn't mind seeing Brady. Like, I, I just think that I would be you just a cool moment Brady. to experience. But it'd be a cool moment to experience. I'm tired of Brady when I assumed it was going to be like Packers Brady. Right. But I, you know, I wouldn't mind, you know, Kyle Brady. Like, I, you could sign me up for that. I'm not opposed. I, I like our money. I want to win a thousand bucks and have 35 hundo in the hopper heading into the, uh, <laughs> I'm, are we placing a two thousand dollar bet on the Super Bowl at this rate? I don't know. <laughs> uh, the maybe we'll have enough to buy tickets by that point in time, John. You know, um, not the, a terrible idea. I mean, I would use the money. I mean, you know, <clears throat> just thinking out loud, just thinking out loud, spitballing. Um, so you can go to mybookie.ag promo code Hammond the number one Rams Bucks. Of course, is there Bills Chiefs is there as well for you. Uh, we're on the Rams on Sunday. Uh, podcast is also brought to you by DraftKings. <laughs> where the Niners' defense got me 21 points today. Uh, I'm in 34th place in our game. Not, you know, fantastic. MyBookie.ag, promo code, uh, MyBookie.ag, what am I saying? DraftKings, sign up with the code HAM. Right now, uh, John Kimmerling, John Kimmerling is in first place. If you missed our game, get in the Hayroom in a Middlecoff League for next week. Uh, John Kimmerling uh, uh, briefly interned for me at 1430 ESPN in Fresno and then worked in Fresno and now is a successful business guy in Chicago. So, John, a uh, shout-out to you in first place. Hope you can hold on. Top five will pay. Draft Kings, promo code HAM when you sign up, John. Yep, download the app. Use the promo code HAM. What, what place did you say you were in? Uh, 34th. That's that's impressive. That's impressive. <laughs> uh, so, Top yeah, five you, pay. Play, uh, get in our game. It's really easy to do. You get to play, you know, keep your lineup under the salary cap. I'm in 69th place. But I got a lot of guys coming hey. the next couple of weeks. Uh, so we'll we'll see. So uh, lock and load. Some, oh, okay. And let's do it. Yeah, it's very easy. Everyone can play for a one million dollar top prize every round of the playoffs at DraftKings. You make a lineup, 
Get your free shot when your new customer use the code HAM at millions of dollars in prizes uh, in every round of the playoffs. Minimum $5 deposit is required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. And if you're listening to this before the Sunday games, you, uh, you also got you also got you get uh, free shot millions of dollars. Did you mention that? I did. Sorry, yep. Was, yep. Okay. <laughs> millions of dollars. Get in the action. Conference championship. We'll have a conference championship game. Official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Also, you can go like I was going to say before. If you're watching live or listening to this before the Sunday games, there's a bunch of just you can go play Sunday only games. Not in our league, but just go play anywhere. Just go to the main tab and uh, pick a game. Right now, there's a hundred and five, one point five million dollars Sunday special, five hundred thousand dollars to first place in the Sunday only games. Highly recommend. So um, go get that. I'm skipping ahead and that. Yeah, and let me. I, I don't. Th- I don't think I forwarded this to you. We got hmm. some uh, new something here. Download the free copy app now and use the promo code Ham to play millions of dollars. That's right. Enter code Ham. Free shot at millions of dollars total prizes. Get in the action. Conference championship games. Official daily fantasy partner at the NFL. Like I already mentioned this, but we're going to hammer it home. Minimum $5 required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Just P's and Q's, dotting our I's, crossing our no, T's. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, folks. We're a little hyped up right now. High on life. High on life. It was, um, I started watching, you know, you've been telling me about it for several days. Other people have been tweeting about it. I started watching the Joe Montana documentary on Saturday morning. Flipped it on. There was some college basketball on. I was like, I'm feeling football right now. And so I went to Peacock TV and started watching the Montana doc. You flipped on the cock, yeah. And guess what happened? Uh, it started with highlights of Joe Montana winning games he wasn't supposed to win at Notre Dame. 38, uh, 17 point underdogs they were his junior year at, at the Cotton Bowl against Texas. They blew him out. It was like 38 to 13 or something like that. Absolute ass kicker. Then he came to the 49ers and became a legend. And then the Niners churned out legends in the 90s, and Harbaugh created legendary, legendary moments, even though they didn't win a Super Bowl. And in a franchise with a long laundry list of legendary wins, this is in the room. It's not tier one. It's not a championship. Long way yeah. to go. But this is, in a legendary franchise's collection, a legendary win against the Packers. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Bengals Super Bowls where he came back a couple times – yeah, they obviously had some blowout Super Bowl wins, the one that I remember. Those are in their own tier. Anytime you go to a Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl, there's nothing like it. I would put, though, any any playoff game, just because of what's on the line, first, second, or third round, like you can have, like Harbaugh's legendary win at Green Bay, for even though it was the first round, was incredible. <laughs> we went, like, that was just, it was mind blowing how badass that win was. I actually think that was the most impressive win of the Harbaugh tenure. I think today, tonight, at Lambeau Field, against the number one seed, and the way the last you know month that played in for them to get in, how they won the playoff game last week, is the most impressive win. It's more impressive than the NFC Championship game against the Packers, because that Packer team wasn't as good. Now, obviously, that win got them to the Super Bowl, and this win only gets them to the third round of the playoffs, where they still have to... They're still 60 minutes away from the Super Bowl. This win, though, in a vacuum, what we just witnessed was on the road, the elements, the the way the game started, guy, to take, like we talked about to open up the show. You're in the octagon, and they take a fucking headshot, 7 nothing, and you're just like, oh, my God. Devontae Adams killing them. You're like, how are they going to score with these guys? And then he just held it to 7 nothing for, like, the next 30 minutes. And it was just, they just held it. And it was... That was Harbaugh-like. Because this defense, it's weird, doesn't quite feel like that, though they've kind of turned into that. The, the, the way they're playing right now is remarkable. And then just, obviously, to win the game, to just be in the locker room, right, as we're recording, they're in the locker room, probably freezing their fucking ass off, thawing out, probably just on the floor, body bag game, like their own body bags, like they're all injured. It's incredible. Like, I, I just don't, it doesn't get any better than that. Now, it would next week if you win to go to the Super Bowl, but that the game next week, you could win the game next week, and it wouldn't be as impressive as what we just witnessed on the road. Like If you win at SoFi, it's impossible for it to be as impressive. It's the, the, the weather, it was negative whatever degrees. It was freezing fucking cold. To me, that's the like that game, I have so much respect for 
Every guy that participated in that game. If you, I ever meet a guy on the Packers one day that's like, yeah, I was a special teams guy. I'm going to be like, well, your unit sucked. But I'd be like, God, what, I, you'd want to know about that game. What was it like? You see the quote from their linebacker? Like w- w- when you lose feelings in your toes and your hands, that's when you find out who wants to play football. And I was yeah. like, that is a quote. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right, right? The display of uh, – you're not saying that it's more impressive – the where it sits in terms of what it accomplished, but just you're not supposed to win this game, right? They were the biggest, they are the biggest underdog of this weekend. Um, they are playing the one seed and home field advantage. I think in some ways isn't what it used to be, right? I think crowds aren't quite as loud in some stadiums because you got more suites. You don't have, uh, you get more replays. So like the refs getting intimidated or your, your hometown clock operator killing a couple of seconds. Although Dallas had that last week. It's not quite the same. The greatest home field advantage, of course, is sound. Weather is right there with it. And it's not just that you were on the road. And that was, I think, a hallmark of some of those Harbaugh teams. Yes, they went on the road a lot, but specifically going on the road in frigid Green Bay, Kaepernick, no sleeves. That's where legends are made, right? That's probably of all the Harbaugh great games that didn't involve either the Seahawks or the Super Bowl, the number one game that gets talked about. And the weather was a big part of that. This game, you're behind. Everyone watching it knows you are on your heels. You needed two special teams blocks. Garoppolo at halftime of that game was trending for one of the weirdest, worst box scores ever. He was three of nine, 43 yards, zero touchdowns, and a pick and a QB rating, whatever you think that's worth, of 10.2. You were down a starting cornerback who two months ago everyone wanted off the field and now everyone wanted back on the field. Then the game starts and Devontae Adams catches four balls on the first drive. Every throw that Aaron – actually, three balls on the first drive. Every throw, Aaron Rodgers completed four balls on the first drive, all for first downs. Every single one of them. Why? Well, I don't think, guy. They didn't have a third down on that first drive. They didn't. They didn't. They never got to they third they, down. Yeah, well, it just felt like, oh my god. So then, like you said, with the thing that feels like your weakness, you're hanging on for dear life, and they pulled it together. Rodgers, 225 passing yards, 20 to 29. Hit the under. I've been talking about the under for two weeks now. Dak hit the under. Rodgers hit the under. This is now 16 of 19 quarterbacks they've played have hit their under on yardage. And if someone tweeted at me after the second Niner series, good to see D'Amico finally made it back from his job interview. That was the best job interview that D'Amico's done. I don't care how good he was in the room with whoever he's been talking to. That was the best job interview D'Amico has ever had. It just, it's one of those wins that you you have forever. And legends become legends in sports in, in the playoffs, whether it's baseball, whether it's basketball, whether it's football, you know, in, in tennis, it's the Grand Slams. and golf, it's the majors. They just are more important. It, it's not arguable. It just means more. There are more people watching. Uh, it's why I think during the regular season, the primetime games can just feel bigger, right? Sunday night, Monday night, because they are standalone environment. And there's <coughs> nothing like the standalone environment that is the playoffs because it's the one-and-done factor. <clears throat> Everything is It's just March Madness. I mean, you lose, your season's over. And the amount of people now that just consume the NFL. So that those two brands, I mean, I'm thinking watching this game, I mean, it's, you're talking about two of the biggest brands that we have in American sports. You know, and, and I think one thing that makes the Packers so cool is they're this little town. I think you talk about the box and the and just the changing of sports, the venues, and I think mm-hmm. Levi's plays a role in that. And definitely, you know, if they play at SoFi next week, that is the modern day version of everything that Lambo is not. Look at tonight, A Rod. I mean, A Rod has seven million girlfriends in his life. I mean, holy shit, that guy's always got. I mean, around they, him. B- Buck and Aikman could barely keep it together. They, well, Aikman started laughing because of the chick that was with him. It was, it was funny. He was sitting in the stands. They don't. I've never been to Lambo. Like they don't have boxes there. Like it's you sit in the stands. There's. Listen, I'm not trying to get sappy here, but there is a purity to that environment that is. It's closer, just where they're playing, it does feel closer to like something Lombardi or Walsh would have experienced than what we're going to experience probably next week, right? You know, if the game, hopefully the Rams win and we cash more money at SoFi. It's just not what it looks like. It's like going to like, uh, you know, an Oculus 
or you know when you first got like a talk radio it, but th- but there was a purity to it you know it's it was that was fucking badass now it, it was i thought it was gonna be badass i i did i was not confident they were gonna win i i had zero confidence until they blocked the punt because i, I just started doing the math i'm like how are they gonna be able to score 11 right. more points yeah <clears throat> or i guess eight more points because they weren't gonna go for two so they were gonna need a touchdown then probably another field goal i'm just like i don't how are they gonna get two sustained drives once they blocked the field goal you and I were on here just kind of watching the last five minutes together. I'd say it's it's got to be, I mean, it's one of the more game-changing plays, I mean, in the history of the franchise. Now, it's it, you, you, you had a name for it. It's You know, they have some legendary plays with, I don't know, some of the greatest players ever. These are role players as part of special teams, unless they, but just the that that play. And I, I would argue that the, the the field goal block, we'll get in high tower, but it's just, the, I mean, now Jimmy Ward is a starting player for a team and he's been a starting player on a Super Bowl team. Like he's a, people know who Jimmy Ward is like in the yeah. NFL, let alone the 49er fans. But those two guys doing that, having that moment, just like whenever a punt is blocked, field, I, I would say field goal and punts are blocked. It is a jarring play, right? You yes. Just, it's just a jarring moment because they happen all the time and it's just always kind of business as usual, right? Some guys rush, some guys block, nobody really gets anywhere. Everyone agrees to run the other way, right? And that's not what happened. And then the ball, the other thing is the ball's loose, and I'm trying to think, like, wait, does it have to go past the line of scrimmage? What the hell's going on here? I'm the thinking Ryan Machado. Loose. Remember the, the block? And it was like, can they touch it? I was like, what are the rules? I didn't no, want to no, say no. it. I already said it once on the podcast two years ago, and he immediately DM'd me. Um, but uh, it's a first you know, young. Right. Shit, no, shit happened. Time. Yeah. It was Oregon. a good time. Yeah. But uh, – I want to go back to what you said about legendary moments happen in the playoffs. I, I don't it's 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 partly that, right? I think it's partly they happen when you're not supposed to be the team that wins too. Like let's say that uh the Niners tie the game and then Rodgers leads them down and scores a touchdown and the Packers win the game. That's a legendary moment for Aaron Rodgers. Sorry, I'm but, laughing at the pictures of uh, Kyle Shanahan in his like ski suit. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just tweeted. He looks like he just played game seven of the Stanley Cup finals. Um, but if Rod- let's say Rodgers leads the Packers down, John, and wins the game with like no time left or whatever. That's legendary. That's legendary also. But it, it just it would have felt different. I think it always feels different when you're the team that's not supposed to be there. And then I and then you take it a step further. This team was what two and four and three and five, headed into November, mid November. It, it was ugly. Was three and five. So you you say three and five, right? Then you say biggest underdog. Then you say it's freezing. Then you say Garoppolo threw. I'll have to check the PFF numbers, but here's PFF Haberman here to tell you about five interceptable balls. I don't know if those are the official numbers, but it felt sketchy. But I think that goes. Wait, back. you don't you don't like the out flat route to running backs that are just standing there with the with the DBs running full speed? I, I prefer it from the opposite hash off a of back foot. That's actually when it's uh, perfect. <laughs> Troy's like, just look. You can pick it off. Just look. <laughs> so what I always once, say, Stokes would have, Stokes would have taken it to the house. <laughs> I mean, he would have, <laughs> oh my god, when he wasn't looking. This is <laughs> when you said earlier when you said it's better than the NFC Championship win against the Packers. I think the other thing is. And I always say this. Yeah, I agree. I do agree. And I and I think it's like that game from the jump, everything went their way. They kicked their ass. And sometimes those games just happen to you and you take them and you did it and you get credit for it. And they were also favored not, at home, like you said. Yeah, you know? for sure. And this Packer team <clears throat> is better than that Packer team was. And that Niner yeah. team was better, I think. Than this Niner team. There's been some internet arguments. There's been some internet well, arguments. You remember Joe Staley came on our show and maybe among others said uh, this is better than 19 team before the year. And halfway through the season, it's like, well, it's not even a conversation. <laughs> but all of a sudden you look up and you're like, damn, I mean, this this team's pretty damn good. Well, D- well, D- Debo's better than anything they had. And Kittle is a better player now. I mean, you, there are some arguments to be made. You know, the, yeah. all the, a lot of the defensive guys are back. They're missing Buckner, but. My, my ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> is he coming back? Or no. well, what about Kinlaw? Is he, can he, is he eligible next week, or is he a you know, microfracture? I, I think my, my ultimate point, though, is just that when uh, when things don't go perfectly, like those are the moments when legends are made, right? The Mon- All these Montana games that everyone talks about are not the ones that he led 31-13 to 13 going into the fourth quarter. It's the ones he trailed 31-13. to 13. 
going into the fourth quarter. Well, you did, how, did how many episodes of that did you watch? Did you get to like their Super Bowls, like when they beat Marino? No, I've all, episode one. I've just gotten through his college, which is his crazy story. But like, you don't really do you notice the Super Bowls that they really talk about with Montana and you and I were we lived through a couple, but we were two or three years old. Are the Bengal ones where he makes plays to come back? They do not mention him beating. I mean, it's a moment, but like what the game was like against Marino at Stanford Stadium. You know why? Because they beat the living piss out of him. Like that, the the defining game for Joe are the catch, or even Steve. The defining game for Steve was <clears throat> beating a Cowboy team that had beat him back to back years. The uh, the throw to Terrell Owens. Right, that some of the games with Favre that you remember, some of the games with Peyton Manning. The, the number one Peyton Manning game I, I'll never forget is when he's down twenty four seven at halftime against the Patriots in 06. and he brings them back. And they end up winning his he wins his first Super Bowl. Like you become a legend by winning games that also whether you're favored or not. Like are you down in the game? Is there a moment when everyone that's watching the game in these playoff games now it's pretty clear? Like listen. Uh, I'm rooting for Andy Reid tomorrow, but I, I, I'm i an NFC guy. I, I just feel like the NFC is just bigger. I, I could be wrong. We'll see the ratings, but I'm just I, I I'm an NFC guy. Well, I, if I the, NFC the NFC is bigger time. with a Saturday night game, it's <clears throat> inarguable. I mean, Niners yeah. Packers, pretty big. So you just like you just get these moments on the road. You never forget the playoff wins when you're down because every single human's thinking that there couldn't have been many humans. There weren't any 49er fans, unless you're like family of the team and you can just stay optimistic. They weren't thinking, we're going to lose this game. And every Packer fan has to be thinking, like, we're going to win this game. Guy, they were they were driving up 7-3 to three in the fourth quarter with like eight minutes left. The Packers had the ball. And I'm thinking, if they score a touchdown and go 14-3, to three, the score is going to say 14-3. to three. It's going to feel like 35-3 to three and the game's going to be over. Yet somehow... They had like this penalty. They, it was like first, it was like second to goal at the five. They got this penalty, brought him back. Then they, they tackled, I think, uh, Devontae Adams. Emmanuel Mosley had the sweet tackle. Then they got yeah. a sack and they held him to a field goal. And all of a sudden it's 10 3. And even 10 3 felt Not like 21 seconds. Eric Armstead's first of back to back third down sacks on the last two Packers drives. But even when it was 10 3, you, you're feeling like you got a chance just because of the math. But it was still that's a it was your typical like mid October seven point deficit, right? Seven ten three felt bigger than ten to three, and and Packer fans had to think we're in the driver's seat. How are they going to score? They can't really move the ball. They only have one real pass play. It's a slant to Kittle that they probably didn't call enough. No, they did and, not. <laughs> you know. And it's just like, even if they do Keep get these scoring the drives, it, it takes the Niners a long time. Because I looked up, I was like, oh, I wonder what time we're going to start. You know, it's the middle of the fourth quarter. And I look at my clock, it's 7.30. And I'm like, God, this game's going pretty fast. Because I just, you know, you just, you do this long enough, you know the times of like a typical yeah. Sunday night or Monday night game. That midway through the fourth quarter, you're talking like, you choose like 8 o'clock. And I'm like, well, there's just a lot of run plays. It's just, that was, fu- it was just the intensity of them being down and and somehow I, I still you know probably 30 minutes removed they won the football game and the biggest reason they won the football game is uh because of a unit that uh i think we've started an internet revolution and a movement that uh that had merit and was not we weren't pulling it out of our ass i actually got to the point where i've started to feel bad but I watched the unit over and over. They're so terrible that it's like, I don't totally feel bad. This is the NFL. <clears throat> but then all week, when I've heard about, well, you know, the Packers unit is even worse. I'm just thinking to myself, it's going to be really hard. If at anything, they're just, they're probably neutral. You know, they're both really shitty. And somehow the game happened. It's like the 49 er special teams unit. And Hightower is dramatic. He looked like Bill Belichick compared to their unit. That's crazy. They, the special teams and Richard Hightower won this game. They cannot win the game if they don't block the field goal. That was a that was a three point swing, which you know could have been even worse because fucking Jimmy. They're calling timeouts, throws the pick, and then leads it. That was an incredible moment to end the half. But the punt, I mean, that won them the game. The punt block won them the game because they were not going to get seven points. They did not have seven points in their offense. I mean, they went 60 minutes and they That's right. no score offensive seven points. No offensive touchdowns. They just won a playoff game on the road with zero offensive touchdowns. How many times were they in the red zone? Just the one time? 
Maybe a couple times. Baby zone. Well, no, because they had two red zone. They had three red zone penalties. Also, they right. got they had the interception the and they had yeah. the Robbie Gold field goal. Yeah, they had the offensive face mask from Dorsey Levens, Elijah Mitchell. They you had like the that tr- call. No, I hate that call. You're not allowed to do that if you're an offensive guy. I'm not trying to like act like some homer, but uh, that to me felt a little soft. As uh, PFT commenter said, the 49ers special teams coach Richard Hightower was also the special teams coach for the Washington Redskins in 2013. I mean, it is one of the great redemptions, John. One of the great redemptions. The blocked field goal, like you said, and uh, I think the Hufanga, the, the, the Willis block, and the Hufanga touchdown, it's just... One right. of the greatest, most incredible plays I've ever seen in my entire life watching football because of what you said. It felt so hard to get down and score a touchdown. It's so unexpected. It's, you know, I, they they did build a statue for Steve Gleason, John, outside of the Superdome. I know it was the first game back after Katrina, but those plays, like end zone blocks and end zone touchdowns, are answered prayers when you need a special teams punt block touchdown you are asking please god i need a bolt of lightning right now that's what you're asking for and i need it right here in this spot and it's just i mean i don't know how many times i asked twitter two kicks have been blocked in the same playoff game but just blocking a punt is one thing Blocking a punt and scoring a touchdown on that play is another thing. Blocking a punt and scoring a touchdown in a playoff game when you cannot score a touchdown on offense? It's, I I mean it, I don't think I'm being over the top. I've thought a lot about it in the 20, 30 minutes since it happened. I think it's one of the most incredible, unique, special plays in the history of the sport. I mean, now there's a mil, there's, you know, there's a thousand that are in that category. There really are. There's a thousand it's not a, it didn't happen in the Super Bowl, but it did happen in the playoffs, in the Elite Eight. There's there's probably 5,000 plays in that category of like just the craziest plays. But whatever category that is, that plays in it. I mean, it just it's it's insane. It was exactly what they needed when they needed it, and it was a long shot. <clears throat> Pro football talk. Packers coach Matt LaFleur on only having 10 players on the field on the final field goal attempt. That's unacceptable. That's on me. Their guy, their special teams coach, I want to apologize for Hightower in the sense of that putting him in the same realm as this guy. Because I, I, I've heard a lot about this. The Packers playing so many games against like the Lions and the Bears that just don't matter. So I, I didn't even put that much stock into it. Like the, the Hightower was doing it against the tight, like in these huge moments. They, they were cruising to wins. Like, oh, it's like whatever. You get a punt blocked and you win by 30 points. Right. It really was that bad. I, I underestimate. Ten, like that's. Is this guy ever going to be a special teams coach in the NFL again? Like it's. He probably had one of the worst special team seasons in the history of the league because they were dead last. And then to have that happen in a playoff game, like you said, the the huge part of this special teams moment is that the offense could not score a fucking touchdown. Could not score a touchdown. Honestly, didn't really get that close. <laughs> They didn't really get that close. And it felt as the game went on that they were not going to score a touchdown. Honestly, the closest they got was probably the Kittle drop, where he probably would have walked into the end zone. He would have walked into the end zone. You thought so? I, I texted someone. I said, worst case scenario, just because there, were, there are DBs back there, maybe he gets hawked at like the 10, but he's fast. Yeah, I mean, he, the, the line of scrimmage was the 37-yard line on that play. So he it probably hit his hands at what, the 25? Something like that, not seeing it. I mean, it maybe further down the field, twenty three. But and he had smoked the guy covering him. The, the yeah. other guys were spread out. Maybe it's why dropped it. Open grass. That that when that happened early in the game, one thing I've really improved on is I don't overreact to early stuff anymore in, in football games in the in the NFL, just because the ebb and flow, and you've seen it now with the first ten. But that was a game. It was just hard. Like I. Rodgers wasn't going to throw a pick. How are they going to do it in Hightower? The, the play that went, you know, your guy, I didn't know your buddies, Will Blackman, tweeted out the video 
of the chop because what you do in a special teams is like a guy blocks the guy in front of him but also gives like the forearm shiver or extends his arm to the to the other guy. Well, as he's doing it, I, maybe it was Willis too. It might have been 94. Chops his hand so Jimmy gets a free run because the Jimmy block, that's as easy of a block field goal as you'll ever see. He was he was right in front of the holder. He was like this. I mean, did it you hit see? Him like someone, here someone forwarded me the video. Someone's like, what is Josh Norman doing? Josh Norman's celebrating the balls on the ground. Like, pick it up, try to run. What, what the fuck? Josh Norman's jumping up and down. <laughs> so I got a text from a buddy that was like, Josh Norman, leave him at halftime. What is he doing? I did uh, a New Mexico-Utah State game with Will Blackman. You missed that one? Day after Thanksgiving? I don't think I caught many snaps. 10 a.m. Oh, 10 a.m. Day after Thanksgiving game. But the uh, chop of the hand. That, it was incredible. Uh, that's where I give Hightower. If, I don't somebody think, in the chat. Who was that? I don't think that's, that's just that a random, like, uh, no. you know, ad lib play by the guy, right? That's schemed. It's taught, right. Now, I, somebody in the chat earlier said, Jared Willis, the greatest Willis to ever wear a Niner jersey. <laughs> Do you see Patrick Willis on Twitter was calling for Trey Lance? Yeah, it's, I mean, that's something. I don't, Oh, Debo, he's walking around. Happy. Okay, he's, uh, he's moving. Yeah, there's also, I like that. I appreciate somebody uh, f- fell death. Uh, giving us pasting a Mayoko tweet. Trent Williams in the X ray room. He's on crutches, so we'll get you know by the time again. If you're listening to this, you might already know what the what the news is. And the news is uh, uh, Trent Williams going to become the first player to play in a in a foot cast next week. <laughs> How about the fourth and one play that did not work? Sorry. Anyway, with special teams, Debo. Do you think it's Kyle's decision to put Debo out there and kickoff return? Like he says, do that here, or do you think that High Tower makes that call? I think it's kind of all three of them. I think Debo's like, hey, man, I'll do it. I mean, it's just something he was great at at South Carolina. Kyle has to okay it because he's a double whammy. He's the head coach, and he's the play caller. Well, his plays all revolve around this guy. I got to think the first one coming out of the locker room to start the second half is probably just, hey, we're going to have Debo return it coming out, right? And Maybe that's a really the plan good all, return. Is that possible, a plan all week? Yeah. We defer. We've been deferring. We come out of the half, and we go to him. Yeah. Why is Kittle in jeopardy? Well, he was limping around, too. I don't know. Somebody on the... We're trying to do a show here, so we appreciate you guys hitting us with uh, the updates from Twitter. Now, the the Trent, someone tweeted, like, late in the game, like, they just had a chip on Trent's side. Like, Trent was hurting, <laughs> you know? Yeah. He was, he was clearly battled through like a, like a bad mf or he is, but he was... He was in pain for a lot of like his game. ankle. I don't know what it was. How about the play where they shifted him? I mean, they did it twice, but when it actually worked and he absolutely hit a guy that was already engaged and that guy flew. <laughs> I can't like it's it doesn't look like it's moving that fast just because NFL, you know, he's a bigger guy. Can you imagine the power and velocity that player on the Packers felt when that guy connected? Like, I, I like, why are you holding people, me up for this? I, I, I would imagine he'll tell people this week. I have never, and this guy's an NFL player starting in a, in a, for one of the best teams in the league. I bet he's like, I've never come close to getting him that hard in my entire life. He flew. And then he that hit guy. another guy. And the, the Niners guy kind of flew off to the side, too, Dwelly. He loves a good Dwelly? shift. Oh, by the way, can we add one other thing on Hightower? Yeah. Robbie Gold made the kick. Robbie Gold, I mean, I know it wasn't, uh, you know, tuck rule level snow, but I saw Grant Cohn tweeted a video pregame of Robbie warming up. And he kicked one from the 40, so a 50-yard kick that came up like I don't even think it got to the middle of the end zone. So you and I, were before we started the show, we're watching the game, sitting here talking to each other, yelling at each other, and we we're trying to figure out exactly where can he kick it. And as that, after I think the first or the second down play, maybe it was after the first down play, Hightower goes to Robbie and asks him, and you said you could read his lips, and he said 55. Well, I think I could see Hightower ask him, and then he goes 55, and he shakes his head, and then he walks away. So I think he just repeated what Robbie said to him. 
So, I mean, maybe, <clears throat> maybe Robbie pregame, you're cold. Now he's warm. You got some adrenaline, but he kicked it. It was straight off his foot. But given the video I'd seen and given that none of the kicks for either team were getting to the end zone on kickoff return, I kind of held my breath. Like, is the ball going to get there? He obviously knew because he ran off immediately, arm in the air, like you said, walked it off. Like he was uh, uh, Kendry Morales <laughs> before he jumped on home plate and broke his leg. And uh, he knew it. I mean, that's – Robbie Gold has been low drama and nails for them. He's had an incredible season. He has been – He's been awesome. Now, he was good before. You know, I, I don't – it's like I'm not going to go over the top on Hightower. <laughs> but, you know, for, for Robbie. But it's just – it's an underrated part on a team that, you know, we saw the Cowboys and they were going through it with Greg the Leg. Like, what's going up with him? The Niners have – you know, it's like a bullpen, you know, or guys that can just hit free throws – they have not really had to worry at all. Like, he's come out. Now, he makes us nervous, and I think some people get nervous, but he has hit all of his kicks. I can't even remember why I get nervous. Me either. He's hit all of his kicks. That's got to be the biggest kick of his life. I also think this guy, back to the legendary win, anytime you walk off a game, like you end the game, especially on a field goal with no time left on the road, it just doesn't happen that often. In playoff games, no. walk off field goal. I mean, it happened. It's, it's the reason the Bengals were such a big deal, even though that game felt kind of like junior varsity compared to the night game, just in terms of the brands and everything. But to the Bengals, walk off field goal on the road, like it's, it doesn't get much better than that because there, there's no such thing really in football as like walk off touchdowns. It's just hard. Most times, you know, like what Renfro, remember, like even him, I think they still had to kick off. Like most times there's a little time left on the clock or maybe there's a touchdown with like a minute. But walk-off field goals are something very, very consistent in football, in college and the pros, right? It's the equivalent of a walk-off home run, you know, hitting the final putt on 18 to win. Like you just walk it off or you miss it and it's just a devastating blow. And when you walk off a field goal on the road, I'd argue that's the sweetest play in football. And usually, like, how you get there, you know, it always depends. Like, do you have a sweet drive? You know, for the 49ers, they got a huge Debo play to get them in position. Because we're doing the math. We're like, can he hit, like, a 56-yarder? Can he hit a 454-yarder? And then Debo gets the first down. Yeah, are they going to be in a position where Aaron's getting the ball back because they're too far to kick it, but they go for it on third down? And they but they didn't, and they, didn't have three, they didn't have three timeouts, so the Niners no. were kind of dictating the terms. And then Debo has the play, but then someone falls on his ankle – and it is one of the most athletic limp offs you've ever seen. He limps off the entire field on one leg, you know, and he bounces the whole way. He ran like a and five four forty on one. <laughs> Guy, he had multiple injuries in the game. The 49ers best player limped off the field or ran off the field injured multiple times with multiple injuries. I, I think I don't know what that first injury was on the third down play where he ended up. You know, kind Stinger, of going maybe. down, and then they go. He well, he got lit up. He got lit up. Yeah, multiple times this year, he just needs a rest. Now, I think football is pretty underrated for how many things happen that hurt that don't really pop out on TV, right? I think on the second injury on that big third down run, he got a helmet right to the thigh, maybe took a couple steps, and then it deadened up on him. It's freezing cold. But I we've seen him multiple times this year. He's returning kicks. He's carrying the ball. He's a decoy on like every other play that he doesn't get the ball on. So he's blocking. We saw multiple times him blocking. He's catching the ball. He's running a hundred miles an hour. He's getting hit from every angle, holding on for dear life as they try to strip the ball. So the I I think he gets absolutely gassed. Like he gets pushed to the he is climbing Mount Everest, pushed to the limit, his body. And I did wonder the first time he went down if he just like, I'm just going down. I'm hurt. But I also cannot breathe. I mean, I can't tell you how many times you know, like it's a kickoff return. I think it's the ball on the first play of the drive. It's like somebody get this man some oxygen. It's really the guy, the guy incredible. I wrote. Debo took him to the fifty. Next play was a Debo run. Then it was another Debo play. It's just like a Debo drive <laughs> until the until the Elijah Mitchell penalty on the face mask. Debo had like four straight plays, including the kickoff, and he was just he got him 60, 70 yards himself. Kickoff return, running the ball, uh, the the quick screen. They gave him a quick screen. 
He was just, he was going Michael Jordan. Like, I, I, I think sometimes we can hype up a player. Like, I don't think it can be overstated how dominant this guy's been down the stretch. And now, granted, no one's arguing that. Like, everyone is in agreement. Part of it is they've, it's just all their games now have been primetime games. They've played the, the Tennessee game. That was the night game. You know, or that was the Thursday night game. Then the uh, week 17 game against the Rams was the national television Fox game that mattered the most. Then obviously the playoff game and this one, and he's had the other moments against all those teams. But he's now had four primetime games where it's just been, this guy's the best player on the field. And he's doing fucking everything. Everything. Slants, runs, kickoff returns, well, limping just- to the sideline, and then like kind of shaking it off and going back in. And then his, his videos are going viral of him screaming at Kyle like, Kyle! Kyle, throw me the ball. Kyle. <laughs> I love it when a player calls a coach by his first name. I know. <laughs> I think Kyle! You talk, you're talking about the first drive of the second half, right? Where he returns the kick to the 50. Then the second and five, he gets four yards on a toss. Then he gets the receiver screen, which it like it looked like it was going to get tipped. There's traffic everywhere. Somehow Next he snatches missed. it, runs for 17 yards. Then they hand him the ball. He runs for five. Then the next play was Mitchell's first down run. Probably Debo gets the ball again after that if it wasn't for the offensive face mask. But and Debo then he actually got, got them, him. He got third. them three points. He got them three points. Though. Well, yeah, yeah, third yeah. and five. He takes the screen and and they're able to kick a field goal just because he picked up five yards. I mean, they probably would have kicked the field goal anyway. But um, and then that was the play he got hurt on. He got him down to the twelve yard line. So it's, I mean, it's it really is like watching a Division four high school game. Whereas it's just one guy does everything for the team. Everything. Yeah, Except I mean, it's the it's, NFL. And he's not the only guy that does stuff for them, but it sure feels like sometimes that he does. Well, it's like if you didn't watch this game, and this is why you can't box score scout. I don't think you can box score scout sports, especially big games. You, you, you can't because you have to watch it. He had three catches for 44 yards. He had 10 carries for 40 yards. And, you know, he had the return for whatever, uh, 45 yards. He had multiple returns, but I mean, the one return was the big one, right? 45 yards. Like that box score does not do what I witnessed justice. <laughs> they, they, they would not, even with the special teams plays, like they're not in the game without him. They, they lose. Like they, they lose 10 to nothing. They just lose 10 to nothing. It, it's just, he put well, how them many on total his back. yards of what, what, offense did they have? Uh, well, they had 130 yards. Jimmy threw for 130 yards, and they had 100 yards rushing, so they had 230, 237 yards. Now, do you minus the sacks? I'm just looking at the... Oh, okay. I just, by those numbers, he had 35% of their yards in the game. Total yards, they had 212 yards, because I guess you minus the sacks, right? So he had 40% of their offense, yardage. 40% of their offense. Doesn't even feel like... The other thing that I think every human's in agreement that watches football, and even players from the 70s and 80s, is the importance of quarterbacks with the rules now. Like, it's a quarterback league. It's a quarterback league. You got to have an Allen. You got to have a Lamar. You got to have a Mahomes. You got to have a Rodgers. You got to have a Brady. It's unheard of that a non quarterback can carry the offense every week for, for two and a half months now. He's like, yeah, get on my back. Now, obviously, they have other good offensive players. You know, I mean, Kittle was really good today. Like, he made some huge plays, even just... I mean, that one catch that he bounced back after the drop was remarkable. I think that catch changed the game, right? Because it was... They were struggling to get yardage. The first down play had been deflected. That was second down. If he doesn't catch it, then they're in a third and ten. And they're not... Was That that wasn't their first first down of the game, but... Yeah, I think it it was. Was it? It was, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, it was. It was their first first down of the game. Through their first four drives, they did not have a first down. Yeah. That was their fifth drive. It was sex. So they were about to get third and 10. Which probably wouldn't have been conducive for a first down. Now, Jimmy ends up throwing the pick anyway, but, you know, on that drive. I didn't think when Jimmy did his Tony Romo scramble, I, I had faith that when it when it left his hand, I'm like, this is going to be badass. No! <laughs> you know, uh, you, back to Debo. You know the other thing about Debo? Like, he's the guy that leads him out of the locker room with Trent Williams. That's the other part of Debo Samuel, right? And Jimmy seems content. Jimmy's the next guy in line. But Debo and Trent Williams lead the way. And you're right. He kind of – if you if you can't have explosive plays down the field in your pass game, then how does your offense get explosive plays? Because what what is hard to do if you can't throw the ball down the field? Then it's even harder to run. If you can't throw the ball down the field 
if your quarterback doesn't make the defense uncomfortable, then how do you ever get explosives? Well, they get explosives a variety of ways. Shanahan's one of them. But it's just getting the ball to Debo. He runs through traffic at an incredible speed. And I don't know if part of it is just his his physicality, like his body, that he's confident running that fast. If somebody clips him, he's not going to go flying, right? It's dangerous to run in space. Uh, it's dangerous to run in a confined space really fast if you're small. You get hit really hard. But for him, I mean, he runs in space. It's like when you see those videos of a car driving and you stay on the fast car. It's like a KTLA, and you just see that motorcycle before the guy goes flying and dies live on television. And it just everyone else is just like flying, just that guy stagnant. Died. He's just flying by. Guy died. Yeah, just nothing. Just KTLA live death on the TV. Nothing to see here. Don't worry about it. Just live motorcycle death. Pretty what normal, normal business as usual. FCC shouldn't take notice. Um, but Debo runs so fast through everybody. You know, I, I, I just don't know. Just because you find somebody that looks like him and has some of his measurables and can catch the ball and run the ball, you're not getting Debo Samuel. Because part of the package with Debo Samuel is this unmatched desire to compete through pain that is just i mean it's leadership it is ab- it's leadership it's what it is well debo's become one of the best players in the league but like the best wide receiver in the league plays for the packers yep and i this is a devonte adams fan club fresno state guy i love devonte adams do you think if they had done some plays for devonte adams like debo cuz he was awesome today but also just put him in the backfield it doesn't feel like he would look like that. It just doesn't feel like it. Well, does it? no, I mean, maybe the better way to ask that question is who could you do it with that it would feel like that for? Tyreek Hill. Because Devontae probably. Adams is a wide receiver, and he's one of the best there is at a time when a, be- a great receiver can change the game, as he did until the Niners started treating him like Steph and boxing won him the rest of the game. Genius. I mean, D'Amico and that defense – was after that first drive incredible? It really was. You want they stat? survived the Josh Norman possession. Yeah, give me a stat. Stat that. Bes- beside Devonte Adams, uh, no other wide receiver had more than six yards on the Green Bay Packers. Well, Alan Lazard had one catch. That's it. Who? That was the only other reception. Then they gave the end around to Equinemia St. Brown or whatever. Aaron Jones, a running back, had nine for one twenty nine. And a huge part of that was the, you know, or you know, the bomb that he caught for seventy-five yards. Devontae had nine for ninety. Lazard had one for six. Mercedes had a catch, but he got zero yards. So beside Devontae Adams, nine for ninety. They one other wide receiver had a catch that gained yards. That's pretty nuts. Now, Aaron Jones was very productive for him. Aaron Jones was really good today. He guy's good. He guy's a good player. But you had to get some more production out of your other. Like the one thing with the 49ers is, you know, Elijah Mitchell had some catches. Juwan Jennings had the one catch. Kittle had a couple catches. Now, granted, there just weren't that many. There were 31 total catches today combined with Jimmy and Aaron. So just it's somewhat limited. Uh, but still, like, I, I think the Packers, they they got nothing out of anyone else. Is it possible that D'Amico Ryan's a better defensive coordinator than Robert Sala? I don't think it's uh, it's out of the realm of possibility. I mean, the 2019 team was second in the league in points allowed. Sorry. The 2019 team was eighth in the league in points allowed. This team is seventh. The 2019 team was eighth in the league in points allowed. This team is ninth. Okay. The 2019 team was second in yards. This team is third. We don't fact check here, so who cares? <laughs> uh, I think this team... Definitely has more challenges in terms of its secondary. And I don't think you can give D'Amico all the credit. Obviously, Chris Kacarek is one of the best at what he does (laughs) (laughs) to ever do it. I mean, it's just wave after wave after wave, right? He's making guys that no one's ever heard of. Well, he does for D. Lyman what Kyle Shanahan does for running backs. Who are these guys? Who are these guys? Besides well, Eric Armstead, the two of them. like you said to me, I'll get, you you said it. Not, Eric Armstead's having the best year of his career. It feels like he is dominating right now. He is. You want him on your team. He was not. 
I actually thought he was a little overrated in 19. Uh, he is not overrated right now. Like he is, he is a dominant force. Uh, obviously, Bosa is an incredible force, but they are doing the rest of the six seven guys are not people that are highly. If we just like got access to like ten NFL teams, give you their rankings of defensive linemen around the league, like it, the Niners group would not be high. Beside you, you, you know, everyone else. DJ Jones, solid player, but definitely the pass rushers, the, the, Jordan Willis. Ebu Cam, like they, they got these guys for nothing. They're street, scrap guys. Arden Key, Omanihu, Omenahu. Sorry, it's just it's nuts. It, it's D'Amico. I don't know if it's out of the realm of possibility that he gets offered a job. I mean, it, it, you know what we don't know is how he interviewed. But well, he's, he's got I'll the tell you, he's, he's really smart and he's a high level guy. I can't imagine he didn't interview poorly. Uh, yeah, he's a I player. Would. The other thing is he's a player. Yeah, he's got one the- advantage I think he would have. He's talked to a lot of people as a player, right? Media stuff, interacting with coaches. Like a lot of times, I think when coaches interview for the first time, like D'Amico met. You know when he met owners when uh, he was drafted in the second round, defensive player of the year. He just talked to McNair a lot. And I don't know when the when we traded for him with the Eagles. He's been sat like he's he's comfortable around owners, right? It's kind of unique. I, I actually think sometimes players. They make the transition, probably crush some interviews, right? You just feel very like everyone's making fun of McCown. I bet McCown's pretty comfortable in an interview setting. I'll promise you that. I bet Mike Vrabel was like, "God damn, this guy's impressive," <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes if you're a coach, you know that's that's all you've ever had. It's the only way you've made. Like D'Amico made like fifty million dollars, right? You end all be all. No, and his his identity like this is not going to be his only shot, right? He's pretty confident in that too. How many head coaches is Kyle going to produce? Oh, him. What if was Mike McDaniel going to get a job this year? Do you do you feel like D'Amico is now a lock to be a head coach within the next couple of years? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Because remember, I actually what feel like it's fifty fifty. I feel like it's fifty fifty right now. Remember what happened with Salah? Like nineteen was so much momentum that after twenty, they weren't as good as the year before. But he was just so high on the list. He was, and if, he was the number one candidate. Here's the other thing, like. Oh yeah, the first thing is just get in the room. If you're D'Amico Ryan's and you're an impressive interview and the numbers speak for themselves and Kyle Shanahan, you know, I mean, it's his disadvantage is just a basic one. He coaches defense. Um, not offense, right? If he was having if he was the offensive play caller, he'd been a head coach like they would have hired him the second he the Niners lose, you know, walk off the the Lombardi trophy or whenever their season ends. Immediately. That might happen anyway, but I mean, it's just, to me, with their secondary, it's a credit to them that Ambry Thomas missing the game was a negative because it actually got to the point where you felt like he was a valuable player for them. So they built him up enough that it hurt to lose Ambry. Then yeah. they've got to play. Josh Norman gets his moment. One-on-one with Devontae Adams. <laughs> And um, he was a trail technique, John, <laughs> as is normally the case. Stay in his hip pocket. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, he was right there, and you hold your breath, and there was no flag, and you you live to fight another play. So, I mean, they they just – what they do with their pass rush, you know, like you and I talked about during the game, I don't love all the moments they choose to blitz and how they choose to do it. It worked late against Dallas, obviously. And Aaron threw they they created some pressure and Aaron threw that deep ball and it was Hufunga and I forget who was on the backside, um, and it was you know Aaron throws a gorgeous deep ball and it's normally on target and that's as off target a deep ball as he's going to throw into double coverage. It's just not typical. The ball hanging in the was, air, maybe he was, he was thrown pre- into the wind a little bit too, pre- pressing a little probably then too. It was starting to feel like this thing's getting a little tight, right? Well, I think it's a great point. <clears throat> I think that they thought. It was over. I think Green Bay thought, I think Aaron thought it was over. And when they were knocking on the door, it looked like they were going to score a touchdown um, and go up 17-3. to three. They eventually kicked the field goal after he gets sacked by Armstead. It's 10-3. to three. But yeah. it's they're at the, I think it's before their first and goal play, and Aaron kind of comes to the line of scrimmage and just kind of got this smile on his face like, I'm I'm in total control, which he is. He isn't. He isn't like it's what part of what makes Aaron 
great, right? It's like his doesn't seem like his heartbeat elevates. And I thought the same thing. I mean, Lazard had the catch on third and three. It's first down. Then they get a false start. So it's second and goal from the 10. They get eight. Not enough. Then he gets sacked. Then they kick the field goal. As John Lund pointed out, they show A-Rod in the stands, A-Rod on the field, A-Rod in the stands wearing a Packers beanie, John. Yeah. But With an I, absolute just dive. God, a- A-Rod. Also wearing a Packer beanie. He could just find some women. <laughs> It's, I guess if you sign multiple two hundred fifty million dollar contracts in your life, and you're a pretty good looking guy, you know you probably uh, you walk into uh, situations and famous, rich, famous, good looking. <laughs> yeah, you know. um, yeah, he's just had a lot of girlfriends in his day. Yeah, yes, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I I don't know if the Packers. I think the Packers had to be a little bit surprised how hard it was for them on offense after that first drive. <clears throat> I would agree. They didn't have, you know, uh, they didn't have MVS in this game. Valdez Scantling was out. Bakhtiari was out. What well, isn't a huge part of football? It, it, you know, football. The the NFL is such a scheme league. It's why I've really learned, you know, doing this where you really talk. Like when you when I scouted, you know, you weren't. I was like thinking about my takes. You know, what's going to be. You realize that first couple drives aren't always indicative as the game because yeah. good coaches adapt. The highest like scoring said, rates are on the first drives. Yeah, so they immediately changed their coverages of Devontae. They were throwing multiple guys at him. They were like buzzing Jimmy over there to like play underneath with the corner behind him and just doing different things that they didn't do on the first drive, which, you know, I, the one thing you never know unless you were like on the staff or a player, and I wonder if staffs even tell players this, that like you set – teams up like just show them this and then maybe they get comfortable and then we'll flip this now it, you know in playoff games that can be risky because you don't every play in every touchdown is really valuable and you saw this game like in this game that first drive that they scored a touchdown was extremely fucking valuable that was the score of the entire game it was seven nothing and then seven three for the entire game like that touchdown you could say well they were just they're throwing a little curveball well that could have been the final score easily could have just been seven to three like that could have been the game, which is very, very unlikely in like the history of the sport. Most times there's more than like, that's not going to be the final score. I saw that the score potential for 14 to eight. That's never happened in the history of the league was on the table. Score got me. But D'Amico now part of it is he did inherit really good players, right? I mean, they have just the core guys of Fred Warner, who's a max linebacker who, Early in the game when the offense was atrocious. I mean, let's face it. They were they were really bad. They were not gaining any yards. They were not gaining first downs. No first downs. I mean, four drives, no first downs. Struggling to get, like, it. were they going to gain a total of 100 yards of offense? You were just, like, these are the thoughts crossing your mind. Nick Bosa, who got a concussion five days ago, or six days ago, and Fred Warner, who had an injured ankle. I thought those, guys, those two guys specifically in the first half – were kicking the shit out of people. Fred Warner, did you notice how hard that guy was hitting people? First like play you, was it the first was it the first play of the game? It was definitely early in the game, maybe the first drive of the game, he had a tackle on a on a run play. You're like, damn, Fred's it was coming to play. Uh it was the third play of the game. Yeah. But he I thought he had several plays throughout the game where it's like yeah. Fred's kind of bringing his inner Willis Bowman in this thing tonight. Because you didn't really notice the other linebackers as much as him specifically, but those two guys, which were after last week, which was it's always cool to win a playoff game, the number one conversation was like, well, can they get their two best defensive players back? And they did. And they showed up to kick ass. I mean, how about the play? And I think even Aikman's like, that effort to chase Rodgers down. And they, they show the slow motion view, and Nick's just like, whoo, whoo, whoo. And then he does the, I love it when a, I, I love a good arm swing to hit the shoe, and they do falls. And I bet Rodgers a lot of times, like, maybe if Bosa, I mean, Bosa on the high end, not everyone catches him right there, and that's six, seven yards. That was a huge play. Yep. But it just, it felt like paws just swatting at his ankles. How good is that guy? It's just, when you draft a guy number two overall, you just, I mean, your hope of all hopes is he turns into, you know, Devontae Adams or, you know, Trent Williams. (laughs) But... The history of the league would tell us, like, if you just get, like, a really good starter, you're going to be okay. 
they, they, I know they really liked him, and everyone was really high about him. Even Steve Keim said when he drafted Kyler Murray, it was very, very difficult passing on Nick Bosa. He's better than advertised, and the hype on him was high. But he's yeah. he's better than the advertise the advertisement on the on him, and he had more hype than his brother because his brother had already helped build the hype. He's a dominant, remarkable player. Well, and he. A couple things, as you know, you scouted. Not every pass rusher plays with the motor that he plays with. That's a huge part of his game. So I think that's one thing. And the other thing is, like, let's talk about the guys we're talking about right now. Debo and Bosa. Like, these are guys that have had injuries, histories, right? Have not playing full seasons. Has not, in college. Has, has, in college and as pros. And this year they both delivered full seasons for Bosa coming off of a significant injury, right? Over the last two years, what he's been able to bounce back from. Yeah, you're right. I forgot he tore his ACL last year. <laughs> so it's just, it's it's really impressive. It's really impressive. Um, when you take away, I know you know you can't do this, but let's do it. When you take away that 75 yard throw that Rodgers had to Jones at the end of the first half. Which was a true blown coverage to a running back, right? It wasn't to me a, an. an it was a layup. It's not like a bomb to Devontae. Yeah. Yeah. He had 150 yards passing outside of that throw. That that was a 75-yard throw. He had 225 for the game. So 150 yards passing outside of that play. That's – even in the snow, that's really impressive. I, I, I do think, though, this, and this was my takeaway from that game, when you build a team, it, it, every single team, whether you play in the cold, a dome, uh, the heat, you want Aaron Rodgers on your team. But when you have Aaron Rodgers on your team – and you host playoff games, it's pretty clear the history of the sport, they play in these negative games. It neutralizes the passing game. Because I would say if they played this game in a dome, their greatest advantage is more to their advantage, right? It's harder. He made a throw today in the second half over the middle to uh, 81. He just dropped it, just hit him. It's just hard to catch. It is hard. Like, I don't even blame anyone. I, honestly, I wasn't even that mad at Kittle. It's hard to catch the fucking ball when you can't feel anything. It's really hard. And that that's it's hard to play in that environment. And it's why I think you know, I, I want to get back into Kyle after we probably do a couple of ads that when you build the team, like you can win games in Lambeau. You don't need your quarterback to throw for 300 yards. Like that's part of the reason Rodgers has lost all these games. And this is just another loss. And I, I, everyone's going to shit on him. Because the guy beating him doesn't need to throw for 400 yards to outduel him, right? Part of like beating Rodgers, why it's so hard in like no, you know, October, because he might throw for 400 yards and th- they might score 32 points. So like, can you score 34? And most people can't. Even good players, like I was a little off. Fuck, Aaron Rodgers is hot. That's just not the case. Like the Niners were able to do that with that performance from James Garoppolo, who now. You know, I don't even, if I was giving him a grade, be like B minus. A lot of toughness and grit, but, you know, the pick. Yes. Yeah. I mean, part of what you're maybe, trying to maybe do. A B, maybe I give him a B. Well, I think part of what you're doing in those games, it's not necessarily that your quarterback's going to throw for 350. It is A, decision making. And B, there's there's going to have to be a throw or two that, that needs to be made. Do you make it? And, um, you know, I think he knows what he's doing. His decision making is at times not in line with his physical abilities. Jimmy? Yeah, Jimmy. When you're saying you don't need that, you know, like 350, you know, big time. <clears throat> but if I, it, but if I told you that Rodgers was the quarterback of the Colts or let's just say like the Rams and the Niners had to play them, <laughs> you know, part of like they beat Stafford a couple weeks ago is cuz Stafford threw the ball, like just did some passes, you're like, "What is he doing?" Yeah. Rodgers wouldn't do that. And then the environment is just perfect. So it's just like, my environment, it's, it's, it's an ideal environment for throwing. I'm going to out-throw you. Right. It's like it's like if it's a Dak non-windy... Dak capable of doing it last No, week. not at all. It's like on a non-windy day at a golf tournament, if Tiger's on, no one has any chance to beat him. If the elements come in, maybe you know a guy could upset him or whatever. The elements neutralize Aaron Rodgers, who is the greatest player in the history, the greatest talent. Like... He's not the reason they lost. I thought he was good tonight. But he he's not. It's impossible to throw for 300 yards 
in that and as cold as it is so the 49ers can just muck it up and ugly it up right. when they had they didn't have a first down for like the first 25 minutes of the game like if, if that's a normal night they're down 20 to nothing right like if they're just playing that shitty yeah if that game is if the green bay packers it actually it turned out worked in their favor right that the cowboys play where the cowboys play the niners had to score and come back in that game and that the packers don't play where the cowboys play yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, John, before we go any further, let's tell the people about Manscaped, the best in men's grooming. Manscaped.com. Promo code HAM. When you use the code HAM, you get 20% off and free shipping on some of the greatest tools in the game. Yeah, Manscaped.com. NFL playoffs. They got deals. Lawnmower 4.0. I actually used the uh, the uh, weed whacker yesterday. The I, looked, I was in the I was in the mirror and I was like, I, I got a couple stragglers. And then I just go the weed whacker. You put it right up there and you don't feel a thing, and just all of my hairs just disappear. Easy, Ellie, you know, uh, USB plug in for both. I actually used the I used the lawnmower 4.0 as well yesterday. Actually, thinking about it, uh, super smooth, easy to do. You just, I mean, it's, it's the best ball trimmer. And I've owned a lot over the years, which they weren't even ball trimmers, right? They were just hair trimmers that you plugged into the wall. This is truly made for this. It's wireless. Uh, the, the, once you charge it, it I, I feel like I might never, obviously you don't use them for that long. I mean, the charge holds a long time. Yeah, yep. I, I love a good wireless charge. Plus, of course, it's waterproof. So, you know, you can use it in the shower, easy cleanup. And like you said, the charging system, it does help the battery last longer. The electromagnetic induction does help the battery last longer, they say. So you got the advanced ceramic blade, the skin safe technology. It's fantastic. Everyone who uses it goes, yes, this is the answer. So get in on it. Go to manscaped.com. Use the promo code HAM. Okay. Use the promo code HAM. Get 20% off and free shipping when you use the code HAM. Unlock your confidence. Always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Brought to you by John's Weekend. The show also brought to you by Truebill. Do you know why free trials are always renewing without your consent? Because they want your money, guy. Scam. scam. It's a scam. Don't let greedy corporations pocket your money. Download Truebill. Take control of your subscriptions. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need, want, or that you simply forgot about. Take it from me. NBA League Pass Auto Renew. It's December. I'm like, what is this, 35 bucks a month? Oh, the auto renew from last year. Thank you, Truebill. Click, click. Gone. Why are you pointing at me? Truebill, can you hear me? Yeah, no, I can hear you. Yeah, truebill.com uh, slash ham. Here's the thing, guy. Do you know on average, on average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill? Because it's like NBA League Pass. You got, you know, the, the Hulu thing that you signed up because someone told you about a show and you've never been back to Hulu on your apps again. You know, you got Paramount you wanted to get for you know, uh, the Yellowstone, but then you watched it and you want to cancel it and you just forget and you forget and these things add up, guy. Time and money and just add up and add every month, you know, the, and that's where Truebill, they catch you or they find it out and then you're able to go, okay, this, that, no more, boom, save 720, maybe $1,000. Uh, we're all a part of so many of these, you know, the, these services and streaming services that we sign up for so many things to cancel. And let's face it, we, especially us millennials, we got a large millennial listener group. We just forget, <laughs> you know, we want immediately. It's like, I want to watch the show now, even though I don't want to subscribe to this, but I'll do a free thing. We'll just auto renews. And that's where true bill saves you. Yep. Nothing feels better to me. It's all, well, things do feel better to me than this, but it's high on the list doing one of those cancels. You don't get my 15 bucks a month anymore. Truebill.com slash ham. Go check it yep. out. Also, don't fall for you guy really quick. Don't oh, fall yeah. for subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash ham. Go right now. Truebill.com slash ham. If you could save thousand dollars a year, truebill.com slash ham. If you could, why wouldn't you? I know we hit on it at the beginning, the legendary win, but 
you know, Kyle Shanahan two years ago, whenever you make a Super Bowl, it's a really big deal. And they were the one seed. They won the NFC West. They went 13 and three. They cruised to the playoffs. They were, you know, at the time, the Chiefs had really put back to back seasons, right? They had lost to the, the, New England Patriots in that legendary NFC championship or AFC championship game bounced right back storm right to the Super Bowl and had been just unreal for two years and the Niners were kicking their ass and they lost and it was it was pretty devastating unless you're an Andy Reid friend and it was cool for him but as a Niner fan like they were up late in the game it sucked and last year was bizarre and this year like you said there was so much hype because the talent the team and the season just kind of got it was weird it was a bizarre season but these last, you know, post the Tennessee game, where it felt like that was kind of the season, like, oh my God. What Kyle, to rally the troops, and let's face it, every player involved, because he's the boss, like on the, on the food chain, he's above John Lynch. So all these players are ultimately signed off by him. And to go on this run, I mean, they, they, they had to be Texans. I'm not giving them credit for that, but he did do it with Trey Lance. And then these last three games, the Rams game, the Cowboy game, and this game. But I would say the Cowboy game, that game will be remembered more for us making fun of McCarthy (laughs) than it will be like Niners getting a lot. They would kick their ass. The Rams game and this game are just legendary moments in a young coach's career. It's weird. He's young by age, but his career, he's got a long resume now of doing shit pretty huge moments for a guy that I don't want to say it was rocky this year because was never going to get fired, but he was being heavily criticized. And I know I'm very guilty. And I, I thought there were moments like, yeah, I mean, I've been around, I would work for coach Reed and we were critical of things he would do when I was like a scout on the staff. It's, it's part of the sport, but you have wins like this. You just don't ever shake those, you know, it's, it's just part of, it's on the flip side, like LaFleur had an opportunity. Now, he was never going to quite get the credit because Rodgers is on the team, but now he's kind of known as like, God, you couldn't fucking figure it out with Rodgers? <laughs> Where Kyle's, Kyle's winning these games and his quarterback is Jimmy Garoppolo. And Jimmy Garoppolo's a solid player, you know, top 15 quarterback, but he's like 15th, <laughs> not number one. And to do it like he's doing it, and all he could come storming back in the Rams game, throw points, trick plays, do sweet shit, or like today, that is just no one is ever going to show this as an offensive teach tape to anyone. Maybe the Trent Williams play, if you have some sweet tackle, you might in, you know institute that play in a short yard situation. But it's just like this is Harbaugh became a legend because of the way he won games in a three year span. It's like I don't think I've ever seen that. I think and, a big part of Harbaugh's legend was Alex Smith's Alex Smith's career was failing. Right. I think what you do, the quarterback you do it with is a big deal. And it gets a lot of attention when you do it with a quarterback who's either viewed who has failed or is viewed as not good enough to actually, you know, take you to these heights. And at the beginning of this weekend, the Elite Eight, I think everyone would have agreed that Garoppolo was the, at best the seventh best quarterback. And I, you and I both, we talked about it on the last pod, put him ahead of Tannehill. Tannehill, Tannehill held down the eight. He held down the eight spot. Today. Tannehill <laughs> staked his claim to the eight spot, and um, and I think you know that ranking still holds up. This is a year in which he tried to get Matthew Stafford, who ended up on a team in his division and is also in the playoffs, and then traded two plus another first round pick to move up for Trey Lance. So that's the year in which he's done it with Jimmy, and I think there's a few things you would say about Kyle Shanahan at this point. One of them is that he does what he believes is right, regardless of the noise. So when I'm saying Josh Norman should be cut, whatever, we'll just find another place for Josh. When we're when you're saying High Tower needs to get that, fired, that, that that aged well though. I did. Yeah, you were right on that. <laughs> well, but you know, I, everyone's calling for High Tower. He's not flinching. And there were times where, and here's the thing, that one almost got him. Let's keep an eye. Is he, you're right. Does he get an extension now? I mean, just one moment. <laughs> the work tonight. <laughs> Um, but you know, I think he does what he believes for the most part. I think, I mean, now we don't, you know, maybe he did want to draft Mac Jones and they talked him into Trey Lance, whatever. But in terms of what mattered on the field for this team this year, there were times when it looked like he should have gone to Trey. Everyone else thought us included. Now's the time for Trey Lance. He didn't do it. 
when, it, when we thought maybe Jimmy Garoppolo would play his last snap for the 49ers. He didn't do it. His back's been against the wall now three weeks in a row. The Rams game had to win, won it. The Cowboys game had to win, won it. The Packer game had to win, won it. All three games in desperate situations. In individual moments, John, oh, you got some luck here. Yeah, you got two blocks. You got some luck there. Stafford threw the – but you start stacking – the. you know, at a certain point, like getting lucky every week is a skill if you get lucky enough weeks in a row that you're putting yourself in position to win. So it's a flex year for him. And I go back to it. I say it all the time. Your success when it's not all going well is a more valuable representation. You don't play a perfect game. Tiger Woods doesn't play perfect rounds every week. If we went and looked at Tiger's majors, there's a lot of domination. Are you going to find perfection? I mean, certainly as he aged, it was one of the impressive things. He didn't have all of his weapons, right? Watching a pitcher on their game is great. Watching a pitcher battle through is in some ways more impressive. And I think that's what's impressive about this Niner team. Some years it all comes together for you. It just, you got it all and you're just rolling. Wouldn't that be 19? That's not mo- Wouldn't that be it, 19 a lot? It more? would be. And even 19 was <clears throat> like, I think they had to show their medal in 19 too, right? 19 a couple was ga- 19. A couple games, but the, the playoffs up until the last five minutes of the Super Bowl were pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. You know, I mean, it was, they were in, they were in the lead every game. But this Super is Bowl most years. This is most, go look at the Patriots run. You know, now they yeah. lost actually in the year where it looked like it was the easiest for them. But most years, it is by the skin of your teeth, and you just have to find ways. And it's this is an incredible. And I think the other thing that probably speaks volumes is it doesn't seem like at any point his players lost. They never the did. belief in him. And for a guy who you know is the son of Mike Shanahan, and had that article by Jason Lock and Four written. And when he got the Niner job, right, you hear it all the time. Like, does this guy deserve it? I don't think there's any doubt that this guy belongs on, you know, the top tiers, the top tier of NFL coaches in the NFL. He's one of the best coaches in the NFL. Yeah. Well, LaFleur, here's a good example. That if you just use the black and white numbers, LaFleur had 39 wins through three years. And the stat had been going around, right? No coach in league history had that many wins through three years. And it would make sense, right? Who, What coach, 13, 13, 13, that doesn't happen. You know, just, well, you know, I don't care who you are. Even Harbaugh, they, they weren't winning that many games. And he and Harbaugh had like a historic record through his first four years winning percentage. He's We've seen him now play LaFleur in, when it matters in January. He beat him twice. Beat him twice. Yeah. Now, like you said, the the nineteen I, Kyle should have won that game. He had the better team, even though you know Rodgers has been better these last couple of years. Tonight Lafleur should have won the game. Kyle fucking beat him. So there's no more like you can't ever talk like there's no. I I actually think McVeigh and we'll see. I mean we're doing this obviously before the Bucks game. I I I think Kyle. I just think he's the best of the group. Now I mean McVeigh could win this game and McVeigh could beat him. Who knows Trent Williams? I, and I think McVeigh's really good. I I actually think McVeigh and Kyle. Are in a different class in Lafleur, and I like Lafleur. I think he's yeah. impressive. Like I think his team's tough tonight. Like I'm not, I'm not leaving this thinking like Lafleur's some idiot. But to me, Kyle, and I'm going to put McVeigh here definitely with Jared Goff. Like I've seen them do more with less with random quarterbacks. The, the argument for Kyle, if you wanted to make one, and I and I do think they belong kind of shoulder if, to shoulder. If he does play, if he does play McVeigh, like if McVeigh beats him in the NFC Championship, now Kyle will probably be an underdog in that game. When you would he? Uh, yeah, probably like one point or something. Yeah, I, on the road. He's beaten him six times in a row now. Six, yeah. <laughs> Maybe pick him. Six times in a row. Who would you? Would, I mean, do you feel very confident saying just Kyle's better than McVeigh? No, uh, no. I mean, yes. I think it's a legitimate take, but I think I, I also want to give McVeigh the credit that he deserves and has earned. Um, that he belongs, you know, right there. Uh, if they meet, then we can put it on that. To me, why I would put Kyle ahead of him. Kyle's beat him six times in a row. Yeah, that's fair. Six times. That's probably. I, now, I guess now, we, we've seen all, them play. McVeigh beats him next week. It. Who cares? But 
Right now, McVay's he's got, I, McVay's got four. Yeah, they've seen him head to head. Kyle Owens and McVay's got four playoff wins. Like McVay's very, very accomplished. Yeah. Um, but I think just, I, I said this the other day. If you took the eight teams in the playoffs, now obviously there's six. But if there was a draft of all their coaches, you could make the case for a few of them to go first. You could absolutely make the case that Andy Reid would be the first one taken. You could make the case that McVay would be the first one taken. You could make the case that Shanahan would be the first one taken. I said Vrabel, but you know, I just you're not taking the defensive coach first. Not with those three guys sitting there. <laughs> you see him after the game, they had nine sacks. He's like, You guys keep acting like sacks, like sacks don't equal wins. <laughs> he was pissed. <laughs> I mean, they got after Burrow. Nine sacks. Nine. I don't again, we'll see what happens. I'm saying this in this moment, but it feels like the AFC championship game should just be Bill's Chiefs. But think about it like we talked about it coming into this game. You can't overcome turnovers. And he only threw the one pick today. And that pick was bad, <laughs> but they got bailed out because of Hightower's little chop move, and it worked, and they, they didn't give up any points out of it. And the difference is, like, the reason the Titans, like, the Titans, to me, I'm watching the game, they're the better team. Their fucking quarterback throws three interceptions. Three. You you do not overcome three interceptions. Like, I, the 49ers could not have overcame another turnover, right? That, that was, one was the max. They, they, they hit their max. They got the one. That, that was it. That's the only, that, that was their margin for error. And it felt like that was a pretty devastating one. But they got the fumble earlier in the game. Uh, right, Mercedes Lewis, even though it didn't lead to anything. But you, uh, I thought it was Bubba Franks. Uh, <laughs> Mercedes no. Lewis is like 43 years old. It's like, you know, everyone's acting like Brady's still going. Like, wasn't Mercedes Lewis? I, I think he played with my cousin Nick in like 1999 at UCLA. <laughs> it's uh, impressive. Yeah, it really is. But you just, to me, what he's doing, it's why I think Andy Reid got a lot of credit, and same with Jim, with Alex Smith, because you're like, you know, should these teams really be this good with this quarterback? And it's what Kyle's going to get a lot of credit doing it with this quarterback. And we got a we got a long off season still. It's not here yet, but, you know, I, I do think the Jimmy thing, I think he's earned a lot of credit around the league. Like he's just better than most people, you know, and I, you know, it's, there's no doubt in my mind he has trade value. Now what the, you know, as we get into trade February, value, March, we just, but I'm just saying like, I, you're going to have a conversation. Like you could easily roll him back. Yeah. You could bring him back. I, I, you know, again, that's, that'll be a conversation for another time. I think you see every week why that's not what they're going to do, but yeah, I, mean, I just said could, Kyle, he threw one pick. I mean, he easily could have thrown four or five. <laughs> he could have, but but as you said the, earlier in the week, you know, hard hard circumstances to intercept balls in. Not you like, like my uh, my philosophy early pick, first half pick. That was key. That was the key to the key to victory. John, throw the pick in the first half. That's the key. How about I think the ball that went by the DB? Well, I don't know. That was, that was you, let's, can we just talk really quick about the Niners? The rule is the rule. And they called it right. The rule's kind of stupid. Brandon and I, you caught the fucking ball. Just like Hunter Renfro yeah, caught the ball. Like, That's what I said to you last week. And you were like, hey, that, when, 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 you're like, that's the rule. That's the rule. Did when I say Hunter that? Renfro, yes. I said, I said to you, come on. I mean, we know he caught it. That should be a catch. You're like, yeah, it's the rule. You got to get two feet down and you can take three steps. I was like, oh, okay. I'm changing my tune. I, it just, oh, now you hate. <laughs> Well, no, I, you I, like no it, it benefited. I mean, the I Niners, because there was like seven fumbles in like seven straight plays. It was kind of crazy early start to the game. That's a fumble in 1998, right? It's just he caught the ball. He caught it. He caught it. Yeah, he caught it. And, it was, and, he, and then he was moving. He caught right? it. But the NFL has all these. Now, here's the one thing. We've been in the NFL catch rules for long enough. That we all know, like you and I started texting, like, ah, he didn't get that there. And then Pereira's like, yeah, no, by the rule, that's not. And no one's up in arms over it now, right? Everyone's like, oh, yep, he's got to make a football move, two feet down, the, and then the third the, step. The rule, the rule is very direct. In the open field, you got to take the two steps. When you're Even not though, like going you said, to the ground. <clears throat> if you catch the ball, like the moment the ball is caught, it's caught. Yeah, exactly. He caught it smoothly. It was a nice, smooth catch. So dumb. So, but at least I'm just glad we're past the pain point that everyone was like arguing over that. But you're right; he had he had it in his hands. He had it. Like if I threw a lemon to you and you caught it like that, and then you took two steps and fell, like, oh, it never caught it. Bad throw by you. Like, no. I don't think I saw. I don't. I didn't really notice him the rest of the game. Did you? Um, 
I thought he had another. I thought he had a big catch. Well, maybe not. He, I don't have anything in my notes here. Yeah. No, he didn't have one because that one didn't count. Zero, zero. One target. Yeah. That's uh, Ju- surprising. Juwan Jennings had two targets. Well, Juwan had the third down catch, but it was, you know, th- whatever, third seven, and then it, right before the fourth and one play, they didn't get. Negated. Oh, Neg- no, you're right. No, they failed. Yeah. Yeah. The- I, I'm always torn on this because I'm a big believer of like, and I, I think this translates in life just like it does in football. Like, go back to the well, do what got, do what's working. But you know, in fourth down situations or like a two point conversion, it's like you got it earlier in the game, and it's something that's pretty unique. Like right when Trent Williams is behind the the left tackle, it's like, are they just doing the same thing again? And it was clear they were doing the same thing again. I. I it's like it's it's twofold, right? It's I understand it. You just do this play; it worked pretty seamlessly. But also, it's pretty clear that probably everyone in that stadium, including Alex Rodriguez and his dime girlfriend, is like they're going to do on, the same on. play. Girlfriend, nothing official, Sean. We're just, yeah, just you know we're just hanging out. Yeah, they're friends. It could be his lawyer or something. You know, I I, I don't know. I'm torn on that. You can never go wrong running a play behind Trent Williams getting a full head of steam. But it was clear what they were just going to run the same play. Yeah, especially when you're such a good sneak team. Uh, Seth on the stream says our short yardage calls were alarming. I had a few people tweeting at me or uh, one text thread. It's like, ah, Kyle's not calling a good game. Uh, to me, that that game where it's like you just find a way somehow, some way, you know, I got you're not, no you're problem. Not, you're not getting judged on uh, the route combo nations. Yeah. <laughs> uh, David on the stream, how was that Rodgers fumble not reviewed? I think the Niners came up with it. Well, did both of the helmet hit his, the ball? Yeah, I mean, they got to the line so quick, remember, to spike. You're not going to challenge the play if you're Kyle because you're stopping. I guess it's under two minutes, so you can't challenge it anyway. You can't challenge it, yeah. But you're kind of in a weird spot if you're the if you're the replay review squad because you can't really – when does a recovery ever get overturned, right? The recovery on the field is what – Well, I, I was on a text thread even before that moment when Kyle's calling the timeouts – and someone's like, why is he calling the timeouts? Aaron is cool, letting it go. Just go down seven. What was the score at the time? <clears throat> it was seven to nothing. Yeah, he so called the timeout played. after the first down run that was like a one-yard run. I was cool with it because it's like, well, their punter kind of sucks. It's freezing cold. You get this ball back with 40 seconds <clears throat> at Maybe the 50-yard line. If you just get to 20, 20 yards, you get a field goal kick. You're down yeah. seven three, and you they get had the a ball third back. They had a third and three. And then he hit 75-yard throw. That was bad. <laughs> But I'm with you. I, because what does Kyle love? Get the three points, then we get the ball for you know, or whatever, get a touch. Then we get the ball first and second well, half. It's and the then thing, we can it's play the thing Brady said on the Manning cast. He's like the thing we talk about all the time that I don't that? know if the rest of the league is the swing. Was there a Manning cast go- tonight? No, no, no. The oh. Manning cast way back in the day when he was on it. He's like, We lived for the swing in New England. We the defer or whatever. We got the ball it. back. You can double up. You either get ten or fourteen point swing. Tonight, hell guy, if they got a six point swing, it was gonna be big, right? Just get a field goal and then come out and get a field goal. It's seven to six. <laughs> it's, I, I, I just kept doing the math. I was like, to me, the final score was either going to be seven to six, nine to seven. Like it, it was, it was in this realm. Like it was clear probably early in the third quarter. Like this is not going to end up twenty four to seventeen. Like that's yeah. So much for my overpick, John. Me and I thought me and the sharps were on the uh, forty seven over. <laughs> <laughs> it was twenty three points. Uh, you combined. know the lock of the lock of the day was the the first half under. What was that number? I mean, I would guess like low twenties. Yeah. Now, if granted, the, you wouldn't have felt great when they drove that. That's where that first drive you'd be like seven nothing. They scored pretty first, easily. Uh, first drive is very misleading. You know, here's the other thing. Final point on Kyle, I think. We, you and I both went back and watched the first Packer Niner game. The way they celebrated the Packers after they won that game to me, was more than just the celebration of a walk-off win. The handshake between LaFleur and Kyle, even if they're cool, there was just, you just want to beat each other. Rodgers, the draft video, I'm going to, I'll never forget, basically, that the Niners passed on me, right? All of these elements, that on top of that, these teams play so many big games against one another in the regular season. They play big games against one another in the playoffs. Even though the Niners regimes have changed, Rodgers has been the constant in these big games. This game, because it's Niners-Packers, means a lot to everybody involved. 
And it's just it's there is an emotional element. I saw I don't know if you saw the video while we're doing this that's gone viral of Jimmy after the game hitting Robbie Gold saying, fuck the Packers. Like there is just a rivalry to it that is just awesome, you know, and and I think it I, I texted you during the game. I think it meant something. Of course it does to Kyle and the floor to win that game against one another. It has to. I, I Kyle doesn't want – because here's the thing. Like you said, LaFleur 39 wins. Kyle also 39 wins. Now, Kyle, worst winning percentage. He's coached five years. LaFleur is on number three. But if Kyle had lost that game, he would have been beaten in the playoffs by LaFleur, and LaFleur would pass him for career wins. It's an incredible rivalry. And I think a huge reason is because of the the level of games in which they've played over the last – you know, the, the eight times they've played. They've had several memorable legendary games. The T.O. catch, <clears throat> uh, the game that Harbaugh beat him at Lambeau. I would say Kaepernick's coming out party at, at Candlestick when he ran around. I would say that the the 19 game wasn't really that memorable. Would you agree with that? Yeah. It was a memorable moment for like the franchise, but the game was kind of irrelevant. This but, to I mean, me it is, was, I'm sorry, did you say the regular season ass kicking? Did you mention that game? What regular season ass kicking? Oh, yeah, where they beat him on NBC on Sunday night. <clears throat> I would say this this that game was an the, embarrassment. What about week three this year? It was pretty, you know, that was a legendary moment yeah. for Rodgers and Devontae. But I, I, I think this, even more than the game that, that Kaepernick won there in the freezing cold because of a walk-off field goal. Like, how many... Did Harbaugh have any walk-off field goals? Like, it's... He got yeah, walked there. off... Who? Wasn't Phil Dawson went, kick a game-winning field goal in Green Bay? Oh, was that a walk-off? 23-20? Think so. I don't know if I don't know if it was a walk off. Obviously, Harbaugh got walked off by the Giants uh, in overtime. Right, that NFC Championship game, his first year. I, I just think there's nothing quite like a walk off. It's the best. It's just because you're just you know if you're on the other side, you're just hoping like can he shank the shank the kick, shank the kick, shank the kick. <laughs> yes, yeah. And, and and if you're on the team, you're just like hit the kick, hit the kick, hit the kick, hit the kick. It's it's a it's a play that. Is nothing like the battlefield of that game of, of Trent Williams and AJ Dillon and all these star players going down, a Kittle like getting carried off every other play, and then it just a kick, you know. But it but you're on pins and needles with a kick. Don't you feel like Aaron is constantly on the sidelines late in a close game, just shot of Aaron Rodgers sideline hoodie, just watching? I feel like it happens to him more than any other player I've watched. Well, his defense has let him down a lot over the years. Like he, I I don't put this on him today no i don't put it on him either he's the story though because he's already saying like i gotta figure it out i mean it's gonna be when you imagine Quote, be one of the biggest so many guys next- contracts are up or on the brink a lot of decisions to be made i don't want to be a part of a rebuild if i'm gonna keep playing did they just knock Aaron Rodgers out of green bay this guy man Rebuild. Every year, why would they rebuild? Uh, wouldn't they just re-sign all their sweet players? Oh my when, god! When have the man. pack? When have the Packers ever rebuilt? What? What does that even mean? Like why? Who? Who is talking rebuild? It's like Aaron. No, they just want you back, and they'll they'll re-sign your sweet guys. Well, you're on the team, so it's not gonna. You're. We have you, one of the best quarterbacks ever. So it's cool. We're good. Well, yeah, and we'll, we'll sign Devonte, and we'll sign some other sweet players. What? What is that? He like he can't help himself, and I I knew this would happen if he loses. Like it's, I'm telling you, guy. I think this is going to be the biggest story non on the field over the next two months. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I think it's going to be one of the biggest stories in sports. Aaron Rodgers next two months. Because remember, they did, redid the contract that he can like. <clears throat> they won't keep him if he wants to go, but they're not just going to like let. Let's say he does force his way out, Devonte Adams. Is not just going to be like, oh, he's going to sign with the Raiders. Like, no, they'll franchise tag him. And if they did do a huge rebuild, they would trade him. And if you want, if the Raiders want Devontae Adams, what would you, what's Devontae Adams? If Jamal Adams goes for two ones and a two, what the fuck is Devontae Adams going for? Well, you can't get both of them. I'll tell you that. No, like but if, I'm just saying, like, if you're, if they're going to go independently to uh, different places, right? Yeah, if he's going to yeah. force his way to, I don't even know where he'd force his way to, but like, if Devontae Adams, hey, we will franchise him, we will trade him. You're not just you don't get to just give Devontae Adams eighty five million dollars guaranteed and just get him on your team. Like he he to me, if I'm Gudikins, 
the asking price for Devontae Adams starts. Like, it, I will not pick up your fucking phone call if it doesn't start with two ones, a two, and then let's talk. Right. I might want a play or two if, yeah. if I'm going to blow it up and rebuild. In what world, though, would Gudikins and LaFleur want to rebuild and blow the thing up? Wouldn't that be like what? the only world, and there's no evidence that we're living in this world, none, is the world in which they Trey think. Trey Lance Jordan, for Aaron Rodgers? No, the world in which they think Jordan Love is a star. In that world, then they'll rebuild. But the beauty, here's the beauty. Even if they think he's a star, they don't have to do it now. They got this guy who's clearly better. So play with him. But yeah, he's going to make their life miserable again. You're right. He's gonna I do think you'd have to sniff around if you were Kyle and see if you get uh, Trey Lance and what it, what it would cost. Now you don't have any first round picks, and why would they? And I, like I said last week, they would not the last team they would ever do the Niners. Like I, to me, the Packers and the Niners are a legitimate NFL rivalry. Like they had, the, the evidence is in. They play in all these big games. You cannot do that, right? Even if no. you like, let's say you love Trey Lance, like you've always said. Like what if they legitimately loved him? They thought he was going to be a star quarterback, and they they're not that big on Jordan Love now. It might be their best option because it's like, okay, Denver. Well, D- Denver just won like eight games. Like Denver's Denver doesn't have the third pick. And then if you I give them Aaron Rodgers, well, the next two first round picks, do you think Denver's just going to be drafting fifth next year if they have Aaron Rodgers? It doesn't. The Aaron Rodgers conversation is kind of stupid because part of it's going to be like, well, it's just like we got their next three first round picks. Well, he's fucking good. So even, yeah, he loses some crushing playoff games. You know where he is? In the playoffs. Like it's, what you would, whoever you trade him to, if the Saints, Denver, wherever he wants to go, you would My, have Miami, to assume. Does Miami have any picks left? But okay, let's just say Miami. I don't think he'd want to go there, but you would have to assume Miami would be in the playoffs next year, and those picks would suck. So it's like, yeah, okay, I'm just getting picks twenty four. For no, it's, you, I guess you, you don't get as worried about that with like trading a Khalil Mack, trading a. Uh, you know, a Jamal non-quarterback, Adams. a non-quarterback. Yeah, but you do not. Yeah, Rodgers, he immediately equals wins for whoever you trade him to. I, I think this thing is going to be much more complicated than like. I think the conversation surrounding it's going to be very kind of lowbrow, and it's like, uh, I'd pump the brakes on it all, and because I'm telling you, one thing is going to be like, where's Devonte going? Uh, well, w- w- fucking nowhere, <laughs> unless you're willing to give up. You could argue two ones and two twos would be my starting point. Jamal Adams went for two ones and a two. I'm going to give you Devontae Adams, who I could easily justify has five years of peak years left, who is high character, team captain, 